maybe the reason nobody seems to care very much about what happens to others is because most people do not consider others to be part of their immediate family. Because if they did, they would love and wish them well, just as they do to those in their own family. Making us all part of the same family in God's kingdom should get rid of most of this lack of compassion. You need to try and show the same unconditional love to everyone, whether they are in your immediate family or in your God family. If it's all right to ask a saint to pray for you when they are alive, then why can't you ask them to pray for you when they are in heaven? I can't understand why non-Catholics find it so obnoxious when a Catholic asks a saint, a person who clearly has been blessed by God, to say a special prayer for them, especially since they are a lot closer to heaven than we are. Statues of saints and Mary are not idols. Catholics do not worship them, nor do we pray to them. Just because you see a Catholic on their knees in prayer by one of these statues, it's no reason to let your imaginations run wild. We are not bowing down to them, and neither are we serving them. We do not think the statue is in the image and likeness of God, or that it has any kind of magical power. The statues represent people we venerate and hold in high esteem because they successfully lived a life dedicated to serving God. Granted, there are some who have gone overboard in their veneration of them, but when you think that we worship statues or the people they represent, it shows how ignorant you really are because it shows you don't really understand the Catholic faith. I believe there is some good in everyone, and that is the part of you I would like to see flourish. Let the light of Jesus' presence cause this righteous side of you to blossom. I beget no sons through Muhammad. But fortunately, I wasn't above having my daughter Fatima. Sweet, blessed child of mine, enlighten my people to the truth about me. Tell them I am your father, so there can be peace among all my children. There are many paths a man can take in his life, such as the paths of power, money, and lust. And the truth is, I have tried most of them like you probably have also. But they have all led me away from God. I found that it is only when I walk the path of an obedient child of God do I find myself going in the right direction. Why don't you join me so we can take this journey together. Eternal life is going to seem like a long time for those that have a tendency to be impatient. Actually, there is nothing very spiritual about what I just wrote. I just wanted to give you an example that I too can speak like Buddha if I wanted to. The Muslims do worship the same God Christians and Jews worship. There are those that think that Allah, which is Arabic for the God, refers to the moon God, but I can't find a single Muslim who believes that the moon is God. 
While it is true that before Muhammad came, many Arabs believed that the moon was Allah, the God, and probably before that thought the sun was Allah, the God. But the Quran makes it quite clear that Allah, the God it is referring to, is none other than the same God that Abraham, Isaac, Ishmael, Israel, Moses, David, and Jesus believed and followed. And the God they believed in had nothing to do with worshiping the moon. Most people believe that the Arabs are the descendants of Ishmael. However, this is another point that those who do not like Islam and Muslims will try and convince is false in an attempt to exclude them from being part of God's family and therefore depriving them of their inheritance. First of all, everyone that has faith is a child of Abraham and therefore can be included in the covenant promises. A person's nationality, race, skin color has no bearing in the matter. So whether they are really the children of Ishmael by blood or not is meaningless. As long as they believe they are, it shows me that they don't want to be left out of God's plan to bless mankind. God has not excluded them and neither should you. Have you ever noticed that the same people who advocate these kinds of hatred are also the same people who dislike the Catholics, Jews, and Jehovah Witnesses and everyone else they find different? It's like their version of heaven is made up of only bigoted Protestants. Well, I have news for them. God is a God of inclusion, not exclusion. And the only ones they'll find excluded is themselves if they don't mend their ways. Heaven is open to everyone who has faith in Jesus. And what I'm trying to do is bring them to the knowledge of that truth. And if you're not going to help, and if you continue to only believe what is written in books in condemnation of them, then I have no need for you. Whoa, check this out. In the book of Revelation, where it mentions the two witnesses, which I have already explained, refers to the Jews and Muslims, it says they rose after three and a half days. On September 11, 2001, democracy was attacked. I have been in jail almost exactly three and a half years, and there is exactly three and a half months until Christmas Day, but that is not what I find really surprising. The prophecy also states that a tenth of the city fell and 7,000 people were killed. In the combined attacks, it was stated that 7,000 people lost their lives. However, it was later dropped to 3,000 to reflect more of a Pentecost kind of thing going on. It's actually kind of a scary thought to think that Osama bin Laden is an example of the type of people that make up the two witnesses, causing fire to come out of their mouths to devour their enemies is a power they know how to use well, and with it, they could really turn this into a bloodbath. 